Good afternoon to everyone, and welcome to our new Educational Normal webinar on computational thinking. I'm Peter Xiao, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. Since Janet Wing's seminal paper of computational thinking in the late 2000s, computational thinking is becoming a new normal in our global educational system. Even it has been advocated as a new literacy in our modern world driven by computing, equivalent to reading and writing. As such, uh, there are countries emphasizing the integration of CT in the curriculum. We see universities introducing CT to undergraduate education, and we also see the emergence of computing education in K-12. And uh, it's very timely to learn from our two uh, speakers today about the computational thinking efforts in the two in Indonesia and India. Right, uh, next slide, please. This webinar is also a pre-conference Web, uh, organized by the 5th ASPCE International Computational Thinking and STEM, and STEM in Education Conference 2021, which will be held from 2nd to 4th of June. Uh, we have exciting keynotes uh, from speakers from Miles Berry, Sherry C, um, Prof Kong, Siu Chong, and Prof Ho Wing Kin. Right? They will be actually be sharing uh, even ideas of what computational thinking is, design of CT activities, professional development of teachers and integrating and we also have uh, papers, long papers and short papers, presentations and posters, right? A oh, unique thing about this uh, conference is that uh, we have concurrent events. Uh, we have actually a student forum called Building Blocks, which is organized by students for students. And uh, it's, it runs priority from 2nd to the 4th of June as well. And uh, in this uh, student forum, we have talks, workshops and demos organized for the students, by, for students too. And also on the third day, uh, we have actually a, a teacher's forum. Uh, and that's where I think we will have actually uh, asked teachers uh, who have submitted their papers to present uh, their work on action research or classroom experiences and innovative teaching practices. We also have invited talks by teachers. Uh, and also uh, we have lightning talks with teachers who have five minutes to share about the exciting work they're doing. And we also have a discussion panel. Right. So uh, again, that this uh, registration fees are waived for all K to twelve teachers. So if you need more information, please visit our website below there on your right. Right. Next slide, please. Uh, okay. If you have any question during this seminar, this webinar, uh, please uh, enter your questions at the Q and A button below. Right. Uh, your your Zoom screen. Uh, we'll be taking the questions and we will direct the. the the questions to the different speakers uh, at the end of their presentations, right? Okay, next slide. Uh, this is our program for today. Uh, we will first have uh, Ingrani uh, to talk to us about computation thinking and informatics in, Indo informatics in the education in Indonesia. And after that, uh, we will have uh, Vipul Shah uh, to share with us about the CIS, CS Hashala uh, initiative in India. So it's very exciting to learn from two of our speakers about the efforts in uh, computational in their countries. And after the, the presentations, uh, we will have a time for QAA and I'll invite our, our speakers even to uh, probably address uh, the questions uh, from our audience, right? So thank you very much. Uh, right now, uh, I'd like to introduce our first uh, speaker uh, Dr. Ingrani Lim from Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Lim is the chairman of Berbras Indonesia, right? And currently she serves as a facu faculty member and senate member of Institute Technology and a member of the Higher Education Accreditation Board. She also served as formerly as a faculty member of School, Eng School of Electrical Engineering and Informatics, ITB, and was also a member of the National Board of Research. Let's welcome uh, Ingrani to present her talk on computational thinking and informatics education in Indonesia. Ingrani, sorry, you're muted. 
Hello, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Perfect. So I want to present who are we, what is BIPRAS, uh, our community, and how we join it, our activities, and by becoming BIPRAS community, what we what we have. Oh, what's happened? Okay. So, uh, in fact, I'm part of uh, Indonesian coach for IOI team. So we start from IOI Olympiad. We feel it is very hard and very high. That's why 50 countries of 87 countries of IOI initiated Bebra's computational thinking. It's for the children, it's easier, and it's a first stepping stone to go to IOI before the idea was that. But the idea grew to become uh, because we train many people, then the government, the Ministry of Education and Culture of Indonesia asked us to contribute to the national curriculum. But our and our end target is how we create Indonesian software developer or IT system developer to contribute to society 5.0. So um, this is our path. And because our new minister is a person from technology, now he at computational thinking and compassion as two additional C in the 4C of 21st century. He defined and integrate computational thinking and compassion and package it to, to the profile what we aim to have as Indonesian learner. So Indonesian students are lifelong students who have global competence and behave according to the values of Pancasila. Pancasila is five pillars of our uh, our nation uh, and the main objective is to survive in uh, industry 4.0 become a good digital a, so, a digital citizen and can handle volatility uncertainty complexity and ambiguity world so we think that computational thinking should be for everybody though informatics is for special track of some of our students and then we have a special training center for competitive programming olympiad making startup and that's the difficulty of computational thinking because we have to handle every teachers a mass of population compared to our competitive programming it's it's easier because we have creme de la creme of students to be trained every year we have to select four students among four million of high school students that's why we have to start from zero we joined Bebras international um, community uh, it is a community of uh, many lecturers. People is also part of our community, I think. Bebras means beaver, uh, a strong, hard worker animal that use their thinking for making something, for catching fishes, etc. So Bebras is a symbol of um, great thinkers, and um, never give up. So by Bebras, we want to make a transformative learning from learning as a burden, becoming learning as a joyful experience. So Bebras will uh, Bebras introduce a funny, uh, nice task to be solved by student. And this is our award of ceremony when we are accepted as member in 
Brescia, Italia. We, we are a young member of Pebras. Pebras community start at 2001 and we joined 15 years later. This is our community on 2016, you see, and grow in 2017 and grow again 2019. And unfortunately, because of COVID, we cannot have such beautiful meeting. We just have a online meeting and it's not interested to show in the screen. So this is example of Pebras task where they learn about pattern, algorithm, data structures, the foundation of informatics. This is another example how we make abstraction. We, we, we tell the student after competition a way to solve by making abstraction and not just by brute force solution so that we can have an efficient and optimal solution. So computational thinking, the, the center of computational thinking is problem solving, having an effective, efficient, optimal solution. This is another example of how we introduce students to have an optimal of uh, something of a task to bring uh, by two, two, twice, only twice by a limited lift. We have to bring as many as beaver as possible. In other case, teacher can modify for teaching. For example, instead of bringing as much as paper as possible, bring um, at most heaviest burden to, to, to the lift with some constraint. So PEPRAS train the student to think and to have an optimal efficient solution. Uh, we use PEPRAS challenge task as a starter for learning. So there is a difference between the challenge where the student solve in three minutes to provoke interest and challenging. And it was a competition where participants uh, got rewards. We use it as a means of learning. After competition, we bring the task to class. And for every question, we have um, inquiry learning and drill it down more deeply asking uh, why did you choose this answer? How did you find your solution? What is the most effective way to find your solution? Define your step-by-step. -step. And if I change this part, what's happened to this task? So this is the, uh, this is the activity teachers work together with the students to take their thinking skill by discussing. And uh, this is the portrait of our, our participation to international community that are now more than 50 countries. First, we became observer, we make a proposal and then the proposal evaluated during annual meeting and we are approved uh, uh, the proposal is approved by all community members. Our participants are very small compared to India, I know, and compared to the other country. We have some difficulties because, um, because of digital gap between school. And on 21st, 2016 to 2019, we just introduced three categories for elementary school, middle school, and high school. On 2020, amazingly, because of COVID, small kids, uh, the beginning of elementary school, asked us to make a special contest. So uh, starting from 2020, we have another category for small kids we call it c kecil it means for small children to start their 
computational thinking skill. For achieving our goal, Pebras Indonesia make a collaboration with what we call Biro. Biro is universities all over Indonesia who will join us as a Pebras, uh, what's that? For introducing Pebras surrounding in their university. You know, Singapore is only one island and we have more than 70,000 70, islands with 200 uh, thousand millions of population. So we cannot do it alone. That's why we collaborate with other universities for making our dreams come true. This is the beauty of Pebras Indonesia. It's a big communities now, subset of international community and uh, this is the flow of our activity national board provide online platform task publication and then each bureau have independency for making webinars introducing to school and uh, they recruit teachers so in fact national board only organizer who work for these PIPRAS activities are Biro universities. We want to make a link between universities and school. So during the challenge day, of course, NBO open a help desk, Biro and teachers supervise. And after the challenge, we announce giving certificate and award ceremony by Biro. By doing this activity since 2016, we have a grant from Google.org, a charity organization of Google, to run computational thinking trainings for 2 million students through 22,000 teachers in 22 regions. So this is uh, our new activity now. We run it uh, simultaneously and we make it scalable from very small activities. Now we must handle 22,000 teachers. This is our website. And in Indonesia, education is handled by two ministers. One is the Minister of Education and Madrasa is handled by Minister of Religion. So now we work with two minister ministry and we link computational thinking to PISA literacy, numeracy, scientific literacy, because our end objective is to improve our PISA. I know Singapore is the first and we are struggling because we are more in the bottom but we have a sp uh, spirit to, to improve. And that's why this is um, our curriculum now. Our curriculum in informatic will integrate technology, practices, conceptual knowledge, and thinking skill. We will make um, an integration of it uh, in line with our father of education that we have to integrate Budi Pekerti is our heart, Pikiran is our thinking, and Tupu is our action. So we have to start with good heart, have a good and clear thinking skill, and make it an action. Not just thinking and thinking, but we must make an action. So our method is more for activity-based learning. This is for, for small kids, uh, unplugged without computer because some region in Indonesia lack of computer. So they play with uh, candy, smarties, and later on with, uh, I don't know if it is a um, marine region with uh, all corals, they can use whatever they have in their region. We make board games for introducing scratch and programming so that they can program it and plug and role play. For example, this is the student 
play as a robot and a programmer, where the program programmer instruct the robot to do. Uh, this is um, we ask them to make reflection, integrate their experience and their knowledge. So it is a constructivist approach, and for for the children. Uh, the curriculum implementation in Indonesia, computational thinking for all, not related to any subject. It is a general capability. And started before, until now, we wait for new reg regulation. Until now, informatics is optional starting from middle school, uh, K-7, uh, seventh year of the study. But informatics is planned as mandatory for K7, 8, and 9, and only for K10. For two last years of high school, it will be optional and many projects. And our problem of implementation is digital gap between urban and rural area. The solution is unplugged teaching at the right level, differentiated learning. We don't expect that with the digital gap, the student have the same, exactly the same regularity. It does not mean that we have double standards, but we try the best so that every child can learn uh, in, in the right level and and appropriate to their context. And we make a transformative learning to be better and better. The second problem, lack of teacher. This is a very big problem. And the solution is making a bridge between schools and university. So that's why we develop our Bebras Bureau, university's lecturers that will mentoring the teacher for implementing curriculum. So that's all for my presentation. I, I show you some photo of our activities. This is of course before, of course before pandemic. And how, you can see how happy they are when they participate to our challenge. And now 2020, we have to do it online at home and for some school that who has not who have not um, good internet uh, connection they do it with protocol healthy protocol they do it in school but this is another example awarding ceremony and this is the workshop that we aim to do again when COVID will be over how we make a um, warm community between teachers. And I think Pebras is also have a Pebras community. Thank you, Peter. That's all for my presentation. I hope I, I, I take the time. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ingrani, for sharing with us about all the work that's been done in Indonesia. I think it's, uh, Bras is very exciting. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about what's going on in Indonesia, about the computational thinking efforts, even all, I, I think there's also changes in policy and all that, uh, please uh, uh, feel free to type your questions in the Q&A uh, button, click the Q&A, and then uh, we will take the questions and then we will answer the questions. And, after uh, Vipo's presentation, right? Okay, I mean, I'd like to actually introduce you to Vipo, our next uh, presenter. Um, Vipo, after reading through his, uh, what he, I mean, his uh, background and all that, I will consider Vipo an evangelist in computing education in India, right? I think uh, Vipo Shah actually presents, presently hates education and skilling as part of Tata Consultancy Services, right? Uh, global corporate services, social responsibility. As part of his role, he's focusing on imparting 21st century skills to students, especially from rural and underrepresented communities through TCS, CSR programs. 
So, but prior to joining CSR, uh, Vipo has, uh, I think, a, a very accomplished also uh, engineer, our scientist, I would say. He was a principal scientist at the Software Engineering Research Lab at Tata Research Development and Design Center for 30 years. And now Vipo has, in, Vipo has initiated and heads the ACM uh, India Council Education Initiative, uh, CS Pafshala. All right, we shall set up the device and sustain initiatives to promote and improve access and equality of K-12 computing education in India. So let us now invite uh, Mr. Shah to present his talk, CF Bashala, Bringing Computational Thinking in Schools in India. Uh, Vipo. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Am I audible and is my, uh, are my slides visible? Yes. Thank you. So thank you, Peter, again, and thank you, Bimlesh, uh, for organizing and the organizers for bringing uh, us together and making this possible. I think uh, there is so much to learn from each other, uh, and the webinars and conferences provide us an opportunity uh, to do so. I think before I get started, uh, let me first uh, share with you what the word CS Pachala means. Many of you may be wondering, what does it stand for? So uh, no, no prizes for guests here. A CS stands for computer science and Partshala is a, a word uh, that stands for a place of learning like a school, right? So this is all about uh, learning computer science. And uh, all right. So I think what I would like to do in the next 30 minutes is talk about why we are doing this. Who are we? Uh, what, is, what exactly are we doing? What are the initiatives? provide some activities, provide some interesting innovations that teachers have come up with. Uh, talk about our efforts towards building a community of practice uh, through webinars, through conferences. Uh, uh, Ingrani always shared a lot about Devdas in Indonesia. I'll just very uh, give a concise view of what we're doing in India. And I'll also talk about the challenges ahead that we have in our country uh, for implementing computational thinking. Uh, I think before I get started, let me share with you uh, the story of this 13-year-old girl, uh, Bianca, who comes from a remote tribal village. And you can see here that she is solving a four by four Sudoku. And the whole idea is that she is learning computational thinking, the ability to uh, decompose, to generalize from four by four to a six by six, et cetera, through this particular experience. And uh, this is, I'll, I'll talk more about uh, uh, these kind of activities later on. Uh, just to share that she comes from a very remote uh, tribal village in Maharashtra uh, in the Kher Taluka. So I think one of the things which uh, is associated with India is that we produce a lot of software engineers, right? I mean, we, we are a powerhouse of uh, software, but if you look at the statistics, uh, if you look at the quality, uh, you know, it's a quite alarming. Uh, less than 5% of our graduates can write functionally and logically correct program. And, I, and only half of these, uh, this number can actually write efficient programs, right? And if you look at, make it slightly broader, uh, only 10% of the graduates have the desired programming and algorithmic skills, right? And so this is year after year studies that have been conducted which are bringing up these numbers. So this is quite alarming. And where do we, what kind of impact, where do we start, right? I mean, how do we address this issue? How do we address this problem? A good way for us to do that would be to uh, see how we could build strong foundations, get students interested in schools. However, if you look at what is being taught in schools, and I think this, I believe, is not very different from what has been happening in many, many countries, is that we have been focusing on digital literacy. And as you can see, uh, students are creating drawing keyboards and looking, you know, what computers look like, and with very little on uh, logical thinking or algorithmic thinking skills. And fortunately, uh, the if you look at the national education policy, which uh, was revised last year and approved, uh, it, it does recognize the need for mathematical and computational thinking and, and uh, recommends that it be taught from uh, early age. Uh, and, uh, it, and interestingly, I think they recognize that it can be taught with the use of puzzles and games. And they also recommend 
that uh, coding will be introduced from uh, middle school onwards. So who are we? Uh, we, we started, uh, CS Parshala started as an activity under the education initiatives of uh, Association of Computing Machinery, ACM, India. And uh, we set this up at, in 2016 with the idea to see uh, if we could bring in a, a modern computing curriculum to schools. Uh, what kind of initiatives can we bring in? Uh, what are the, can we, uh, what advocacy efforts can we take? And you can see the results of that in the national education policy. How do we make computing education to be equitable? Uh, like in Ingrani mentioned earlier in her talk, we have large parts of the country that do not have the necessary computing resources. So how, what kind of an approach can we take to make sure that the computing education is available to all? And so towards this, uh, along with a set of volunteers that come from uh, uh, academia, educators, industry, uh, we created a draft curriculum and uh, content comprising 200 plus teaching aids for grades one to eight. One to eight. And this is something that we had, uh, we started piloting from 2016. And I'm happy to say that we have reached more than 400,000 students who are actively implementing this. Uh, this is directly uh, in, uh, uh, these are directly students who we work with. And I think what is even more interesting and uh, satisfying for us is two thirds of these students come from the uh, rural government schools. These come from underrepresented communities. And uh, it is good to see the kind of anecdotal uh, uh, evidence that we have, the stories that we hear, that this is making a good impact on uh, their uh, computing uh, education and uh, skills and their problem solving skills. So we started this, as I mentioned, uh, to uh, uh, fight uh, one of the important uh, uh, areas for us was to train teachers because we do not have uh, enough uh, computing teachers in school. I think the problems are not very different from other countries. I think Ingani also spoke about these kind of problems. And so we have went about creating the, doing awareness programs, creating running training programs on computational thinking, on computer science. And we have since 2016 trained over 12,000 teachers. Uh, we have also been successful in uh, interesting uh, state governments. Uh, education is uh, a state subject. And so uh, Tamil Nadu state uh, integrated uh, the curriculum as part of its mathematics curriculum. And the 30,000 schools, in addition to the number that I have listed uh, below, uh, have been learning computational thinking uh, integrated into mathematics since uh, 2018. I'm happy to note that uh, efforts are underway and another state, uh, Andhra Pradesh has also been uh, uh, looked, has uh, integrated some of this into their uh, math curriculum. Uh, one of the things which we realized and which we found is that all stakeholders, that importantly schools as well as parents require, would like to have books uh, on computational thinking. And so uh, fortunately for us, Cambridge University Press uh, uh, partnered with us and created derivative content, uh, which is available for schools to use, use and students to follow. So uh, I think our emphasis has been uh, through this uh, curriculum has been on problem solving, logical thinking uh, and uh, computational thinking. One point I should say is that uh, this uh, would not have been possible without the support from our uh, various partners, industry, academia, and I've not listed the name of all the academicians who have been involved, not the, uh, the universities that have been involved, uh, just the people who have provided us uh, support in terms of funding or volunteers, et cetera. Uh, uh, one of the things we have been blessed with is the support we have had from our volunteers. Um, uh, or half of them or 50% of them have a, a master's or a PhD degree and come with over 15 years of experience. So I think what we have been able to do is tap into uh, a lot of experience uh, and uh, uh, bring to this particular uh, uh, initiative. Uh, early on, we looked at efforts uh, from various countries in computing education and the way computers, computing uh, science or uh, computational thinking was taught. And we decided to take a slightly different approach. 
uh, we uh, were influenced by discrete mathematics because it lends itself uh, naturally to problem solving, recognizing patterns, uh, structure, reasoning, uh, learning to generalize, mod mathematical modeling, right? So we use that uh, as uh, uh, something that influenced us and then created a set of activities for different age groups that incorporated the computational thinking principles. Uh, and uh, and, you, and uh, just to go into the details here would itself be another, uh, for probably uh, another time. But these are, I think through activities, I can perhaps uh, highlight uh, some of these. Uh, but just to maybe uh, uh, take up one of these, uh, you know, is let's say uh, systematic listing, counting, and reasoning. The whole idea is that when eventually when students program, they need to be aware that there are multiple possibilities. There are many ways that a program uh, a problem can be solved, and that there are many paths that they would encounter in the problem. And so, the, how do they go about listing these? How do they go about building the necessary reasoning skill for these? And so that's how uh, the, the curriculum and the activities are uh, structured. You know, what I'd like to start is by just sharing with you some of these so that uh, they, they, you, it will give you an idea about uh, what these are. So uh, one thing which took us really by surprise was Sudoku and the popularity that it gained. Uh, we start. We we included this particular uh, uh, way to introduce the notion of uh, uh, generalization and uh, decomposition. The idea being that uh, uh, you have a nine by nine Sudoku, uh, which could be difficult to solve. How do you get students interested in solving such things? You know, usually these are considered as nerdy activities. Activities you see them in the newspaper, but something that is something for somebody else to solve, right? So he said, okay, let's, let's see if we can uh, break it, uh, make it simpler. And if uh, we are able to come up with an approach for solving a four by four Sudoku, can we then generalize this to a six by six Sudoku and later to a nine by nine Sudoku and the students are ready. And for a four by four Sudoku, as you all know, how do you go about it? We just decompose it and then solve one grid at a time, a grid of four uh, cells here. And that's how we go about solving it. As I said, I think it was really a surprise for us, the kind of popularity it gained. Uh, we, uh, uh, in the earlier slide, I spoke about uh, one school system, uh, AP Swari. And these are a school a system of 425 schools with around 200,000 students. Uh, students coming from uh, the weaker sections of the society, these are residential schools. And they had last year, uh, conducted a Sudoku competition, uh, and over 100,000 students took part in this competition. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there has been any other competition which is larger than this, but I think uh, it was very satisfying to note the scale of this. And this is not just that this one particular school system has done. And almost every schools that we have been interacting with, they have gone ahead and conducted uh, Sudoku competitions. And I think the, this photograph was just to highlight uh, one of the interactions I had with students in the rural parts of uh, Gujarat. And these are government school. And you could see the enthusiasm amongst the children when we were trying to solve uh, four by four Sudoku. It wasn't always easy. Uh, in some uh, of the tribal, uh, tribal schools, especially one in Gujarat, uh, the literacy rate has been around 20% or so. Uh, female literacy rate, uh, just low double digits or so, 10%, 11% or so. So when the teachers introduced Sudoku, uh, the students found it really challenging to understand uh, numbers. There was always a fear for math. Uh, and we see a lot of dropouts in schools because of that. So what he did was he, uh, the teacher here, uh, Googled and found some other ways to teach. And he came up with this thought of uh, using replacing numbers with symbols and then uh, using pattern matching and using patterns to help students understand uh, the problem and solve it. Uh, I think he was quite successful. And by the second day, his students were solving a six by six Sudoku using the uh, numerals. Uh, and he, had, he could replace the uh, symbols with numerals. Uh, we found teachers take this forward 
uh, used locally available material, uh, whether they were flowers, whether they were vegetables, and use them to create Sudoku. I think it also, uh, in some sense, helped them with this notion of encoding and decoding also, right? Because they were now able to map the numbers to symbols or map numbers to flowers or otherwise, and then solve this. And I think this is something that there were uh, challenges again here on this on how innovative the features could be. And we found teachers use yoga and various uh, yoga asans uh, to uh, use as a students actually they drew it on I perhaps I should put a use that photograph uh, but students uh, on the floor uh, doing different yoga asans for for uh, uh, Sudoku. Uh, I, I'll perhaps uh, skip this. Uh, uh, maybe come back to it if we have more time. I think uh, Indrani also spoke about uh, playing the roles of a robot and programming. And I think this is very very important. Uh, so in this, uh, uh, what uh, uh, we have tried to do is to see how students can initially follow instructions given by teachers and play, you know, play act as a robot following those instructions. And the idea being that through these instructions, they understand the notion of systematic uh, sequencing of instructions. They understand the notion of being precise. They understand the notion of precision, right? And then we encourage the students to develop instructions on their own. It could be as simple as uh, uh, a student walking from some place to uh, maybe the, black, the whiteboard in the classroom or to the door in the classroom. And I think it's a lot of fun uh, activity for students, you know, because initially they are not likely to be precise. And uh, the robot is likely to stumble into uh, all kinds of things, whether they're benches or whether they go and uh, you know, hit the wall or something. And through this, uh, they learn the notion of why it is important to be precise. One of the things that we, uh, we, we, we do and which finds a lot of resonance with teachers in our training program is use the uh, analogy of uh, taking or giving directions. Uh, I don't know if uh, how many of you have been to India, but if you have been and if you ask somebody for directions, every person that you ask for, you're likely to get a different set of directions. So uh, uh, many a times it has happened that you've asked, I've asked people how far, much further do I need to walk? And they would say perhaps some the destination is two minutes and would have taken me 20 minutes to reach there, right? And, and the whole reason is that we are not precise. And why should that be the case? We don't have a language to express this. We don't know what precision means to be. With Google Maps, it is very simple because we can, the Google Maps provides us the language as well as the instructions broken down to in a precise manner for us to follow. And this is what this activity is all about, to prepare students so that they can start uh, programming at some point in time. Uh, another activity, which again uh, 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 was uh, something that students picked up quite a bit, which became very, very popular. And I think I should just add here, uh, just in the context of uh, Sudoku, uh, before I get to this, we in fact have, uh, a, uh, in some schools, they anecdotally again reported to us that there's a boy called Sudoku boy uh, in one of the rural schools in Maharashtra. And the role that the Sudoku boy plays is he sets uh, Sudoku uh, puzzles for the class and for the school to solve, right? So that's his activity because he loves doing that. And so, you know, suddenly you're finding a lot of interest that is being generated among students and recognition that comes with this peer recognition, peer uh, motivation, and that kind of uh, encourages them to do better. Uh, again, all uh, anecdotal, but we have heard of cases where students have then gone on and done better in their uh, academics as well. So the, here, this is a tribal school uh, in a remote part of Maharashtra. And what they're learning is they're learn, trying to guess the birth date, one student trying to guess the birth date, uh, or two of them together trying to guess the birth date from somebody in the audience. And uh, what we don't tell them is that they're learning the notion of binary search here. Uh, you know, what they're trying to do is they note down, and, and the, the condition given to them is that they should be asking the minimal number of questions, and the answers would be a yes or a no. And what we do is we note down all the questions. You know, this is again the same thing that students are doing, but we note down all the questions and then they discuss each question and see how does it reduce the search space. Uh, is it a good question or not? Does it reduce the search space by half? 
And in doing so, I think they then are able to apply this and then they then they extend these games to things like uh, guessing numbers between what are one and hundred, one and thousand, or whatever the case may be, or even then taking it further to the games a lot of people have played in the past, 20 questions, trying to guess whether, whether it's a sports personality, political personality, history, uh, historian, et cetera, historical figures, et cetera. So I think this has, uh, again, caught on a lot in schools, uh, students catching hold of their siblings, uh, trying to guess their birthdays, then going home, asking their parents, you know, sitting with them and saying, okay, let's play a game and I let us guess your birthday, doing it with your uncle or aunt. And so this has really taken off uh, very well as an activity. And I think it also, these kind of activities uh, also bring out the fun aspect among students. Uh, uh, again, uh, just, I'll just continue with a few more examples, uh, but you can notice how they bring in craft also into these activities. So you can notice here that they are doing uh, binary to decimal conversions here, uh, but then they're creating petals, flowers, and in these flowers, you can see that there are uh, zeros and ones uh, associated with them and the answer for that. They know where to start to unroll that uh, number. Uh, and but uh, this is the way the teachers have innovated and they're trying to introduce uh, uh, conversions uh, uh, from uh, binary to decimal and decimal to binary. Uh, one of the activity which has been very, very, another activity which has been popular has been the parity bit activity. Uh, this has been borrowed from uh, CS and plug one work done by uh, uh, Tim Bell. And uh, as I said, again, it's been uh, popular, but I think what you see here is uh, teachers and students use again, uh, uh, physical materials and using these materials to identify uh, what, uh, how, how to, to you know, so we'll go ahead and work on this activity. I think what they do at the end of this is uh, then give examples on how does it relate? Why is parity bit important? I give examples of barcodes. Uh, you, everything has a barcode now, whether it is pens or notebooks or anything you take, anywhere you go. Uh, then they talk about why is it important to have a parity bit. And so they can relate to real life examples. And so uh, uh, a lot of these activities come from there. Uh, uh, modeling is very, very important. Abstraction being the, uh, the, the foundation uh, for uh, uh, computer science, computational thinking. And I think what, you know, what we like is not only do teachers incorporate it, then they start relating it to, uh, as, they, as they mature in this, uh, uh, they start relating it to activities around them. So one of the things that happens in uh, the city that I live in, uh, there is a, a festival and then there are a few temples that people visit during this festival. And what the teacher uh, have, one of the teachers did is then she asked the students, if you were to visit these uh, temples, what would be the shortest path that you would take? And what are the different paths that you would take? And so you know what now they are doing is they're trying to relate it to uh, things around them, how the garbage uh, truck moves and all kinds of things that they would see uh, around them. Uh, one of the very important things is to ensure that we build a community of practice and we support the teachers. Uh, very few teachers, like Ingran, you mentioned, have a uh, computing background. A lot of them come with a subject background. And so we have been conducting webinar series, bringing in uh, speakers from, uh, so that we can expose them to uh, what is happening in other countries as well. And uh, uh, the other thing that we have done is we started a conference uh, for the teachers uh, to share their, uh, the work they are doing. It being a platform where they can talk about uh, what they are working on, what are the innovations they're coming up with, uh, so that they get to learn from other teachers as well. Uh, I think this has been very, very successful. Uh, we also are trying to encourage more teachers to take up compute, computer, computational thinking. And so we have come up with an uh, award to recognize excellence in teaching as well. Uh, none of these ideas are new. Uh, all of these are ideas which others, and I'm sure you are implementing in your countries as well. But what we are finding is that these are working very well to uh, bring our teachers together, provide them a platform uh, where they can uh, talk about what they are doing. At the same time, we can provide exposure to them in terms of what is happening in uh, other countries uh, as uh, well. 
Uh, I will very quickly come to uh, what uh, Yanni spoke about in terms of Davis. In notice one, in all of this, I'm not talking about what is Davis because it's already been spoken by her. Uh, and so we started in 2016 as an observer. Uh, we became full members in 2020. And uh, a journey we started, we have a huge population uh, of uh, students. Uh, and since we have been working with a large number of students, we're fortunate to get them interested, get the schools interested. And we started with, uh, in the first year, uh, we started with this. I think one thing I should mention here is that uh, only one third of our students take the challenge online. Uh, two thirds of our students uh, take the challenge offline because we don't have the necessary resources. Uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, uh, yeah, we, we had to reschedule uh, our uh, the Babras challenge and uh, do it in uh, uh, only in an online mode. And hence, uh, you can see that we had some drop in participation. Uh, but the earlier years, uh, we, we did it both online and offline. While we saw some drop because of the nature being offered online because students don't have devices, and especially the students we have been working with, right? As I mentioned earlier, these are students from the weaker sections of the society. They don't even have a, a smartphone at home. So uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, a lot of the learning has been impacted. But we have grown in terms of the languages that we offer the challenge in. Uh, as well as the number of states in India that the challenge uh, is offered in. Uh, one of the things we have also tried to uh, popularize it to increase the visibility is to partner with newspapers. So one of the par a local partner is uh, they publish uh, newspapers in education and they, it's a fortnightly edition and they carry various uh, uh, challenges with this task uh, in these so as to in get students interested and so that they get an exposure to the challenge itself. Uh, teachers, they take it up in the classrooms after the challenge, very much like uh, what uh, Indrani mentioned. Uh, they put it up on whiteboards outside the classroom for a week. The students discuss it and then they discuss it in the classroom. But what we also try to do is to see if we can provide opportunities uh, for the students uh, through papers for the talent that we have identified uh, to provide them other paths pathways uh, for their future. Uh, this could include scholarships. And I think what you've also seen is, you know, some of the first generation learners uh, doing very, very well, uh, coming from uh, government schools, weaker sections, but uh, yes, doing as well as uh, elite school uh, students. Uh, I would like to get back to the national education policy. Uh, now that uh, I, I mentioned that, you know, there were two aspects that, that stand out, uh, uh, computational thinking, AI, ML, uh, dig, uh, design thinking, as well as coding that is to be introduced. And I think what, what, I'm, what we are already seeing is a plethora of uh, efforts being directed towards coding. A lot of companies now directing their efforts towards teaching. What the message that I think the challenge ahead for us is that we don't get just caught up in you know, everybody trying to learn coding without setting the foundation. And I think it is very important that uh, people recognize that CT goes beyond coding and it's a systematic approach to problem solving. And hence we need to lay a strong foundation for this. Uh, we, are, we hope that the focus does not just uh, remain on AI and ML because that is the in thing that is what everybody uh, is hearing about. Uh, missing the, as I mentioned, the conceptual uh, basis for this. Uh, at the same time, coding is important. Uh, however, I think we need to be aware that we do have challenges in the uh, country uh, with only uh, less than one third of our schools having computers. And even the schools that have computers in the rural areas, it may be one or two computers per school, uh, where in, in urban areas, it may be one computer shared between four or five students, right? Uh, electricity is a challenge, internet connectivity, especially in the rural area is a challenge. So the question is going to be, how do we make this so that the, the gap, the learning gap, uh, the digi digital gap or the digital divide does not increase with this initiative, but that we can take all the students along with us as part of this initiative. I think training is going to be a challenge. As I mentioned, we have few computer teachers. Uh, a lot of these are subject teachers coming with varied backgrounds. 
And so how do we integrate, how do we bring this in, how do we integrate computation thinking into uh, different subjects uh, is going to be the way of uh, challenge ahead for us, the path ahead for us. Uh, assessment has always been a challenge. There is work happening. But when you talk about the scale at which we are operating, uh, the scale of numbers, how do we assess? Do we assess individual skills? Do we assess uh, the ability of the students to apply this? Is something of a challenge for us. So I, I will I will stop here. I think uh, I think I'm running out of time as well. But I would like again like to uh, thank the organizers for this opportunity. And uh, uh, I hope through this conference we stay connected. Uh, I'm also happy to share that uh, four of our teachers uh, in India have also contributed and uh, submitted uh, uh, to the main conference. And I look forward to uh, hearing uh, them at the conference as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vipo, for the I think sharing of a CS Pashal. I think it's very exciting to see uh, how you're reaching out even to so many students and teachers, and also your very diverse uh, range of schools, I think, in India, from the rural to the urban schools. Yeah, so thank you very much for sharing. And we are so honored to have, I think, Vipul and Ingrani to share first. I think we've learned a lot from you. Uh, I mean, about all the efforts that's going on in, in India and Indonesia. And I think uh, we just want to wish you all continued success uh, in, in your in the work in Berberas and also with VSCS Pashala.